What's up Nightwalkers? Today I'll be going over the FLIR Scion Thermal Monocular. In all my videos I like to give a full disclosure and that is I work at TVC and we sell these particular thermal monoculars made by FLIR. Now with these Scions, FLIR has two different series of them. They have a PTM which stands for Professional Thermal Monocular. It's meant for law enforcement use and then there's an OTM which stands for Outdoor Thermal Monocular and that's just for recreational use. Uh, biggest differences visually between them is that the, the PTMs are going to be black like this to be more tactical whereas the OTMs are going to be green. And now the other differences between them is the uh, PTMs do have the ability to stream encrypted video uh, from the device connected to a device like whether it's your cell phone or a tablet or something like that. Uh, you just have to download um, something like the, like VLC on your device that will allow you to basically uh, stream video from the device. Now, um, with the OTMs, I, I do believe with a firmware upgrade, you can get the same the same functionality for the for the streaming of the video. So not not a huge difference between them, other than the tactical finish. Honestly, when it comes down to it. Now, besides the color differences between them, um, there are some technical differences between the PTMs and the OTMs. In particular, with this one right here, uh, this is a PTM 166. And then the closest model in the OTM series is gonna be the OTM 266. And just to give you an example of the differences, so with this 166, it uses a 14 millimeter lens, which gives you a 0.7 base magnification level which is a uh, 32 by 24 degree field of view. Now with the 266, uh, that uses an 18 millimeter lens, which gives you a one power or one by uh, base magnification level, and then a slightly smaller field of view, which is gonna be 24 by 18 degrees. Now, if you want more magnification level, FLIR does have uh, different models that have bigger lenses on them. Although this PTM 166 and the OTM 266 do have slightly different specs, uh, the image quality, the performance you're going to get is going to be fairly similar. You know, the 266 is going to be a little bit better because it has a little bit more magnification to it. And obviously the 366s um, that have the 35 millimeter lenses, those are going to give you a, you know, a better image compared to this one because you got more magnification level of it. I'll run through the device real quick for you guys. So here on the front, you got this lens cap. Uh, recesses inside the lens here nice and tight, so it's going to keep dirt and debris out, outside of it. Uh, to keep that lens safe on the bottom here this is your port for the usb you simply move this thing out of the way and you've got a usb-c port here to access the device to pull video out of it um, update firmware all that kind of stuff once you plug it into the computer here on the bottom you got your quarter by 20 camera thread this is for going onto a tripod and then this latch right here is how you access the battery compartment and so uh, in here i've got the rechargeable uh, battery kit this is something i highly recommend this gives you about seven to eight hours of runtime, if not longer. Um, but what it comes standard with is this battery tray and it holds uh, six um, 123 batteries. And this will give you about four and a half um, hours of runtime. And myself, I mean, this is definitely manageable, but that is a lot of 123 batteries. Um, I would certainly go with the rechargeable battery kit. Now inside of the device, uh, this is your uh, little micro SD card here. So that way, if you wanna record video and photos, or otherwise, you can save information on the device itself, but obviously you're gonna be limited to how much that you can save there. And then on the inside, uh, here's gonna be your serial number and all the other information of the device itself. At the back of the device, you've got your lanyard loop right here. You've got your rubber eye cup here. If you don't wanna use the eye cup, you can simply take it off of here. It's pretty easy to go off and on. Uh, this is your diopter ring for adjusting the image uh, to your eyesight. At the top of the device are your buttons, you know, for controlling the device itself. Uh, this, this top button right here is gonna be your power button. You simply hold it down for a couple seconds to turn on the unit and also to turn it off. Here's an up arrow, down arrow for menu selections. Uh, this up arrow also um, allows you to basically increase your magnification level. Uh, short taps are gonna do um, step increases and then a long hold is gonna do a, um, a gradual, you know, zoom in. And same thing for the rear for zooming out. Now a long press of the center button is gonna get you into the menu and then you use the up and down arrows to navigate the menu and make your selections with the center button. Uh, this rear button right here is how you take photos and videos. And so a, a single press of it is gonna take a photo, long press is gonna turn on video, another long press is gonna turn off the video. Now one thing I'll say is the buttons, um, they are recessed inside the device. Um, they're all rubberized and it, it is a little difficult sometimes to tell which button you're on. Uh, but it's not that bad. You'll figure it out. And, uh, you know, one thing to add with that is, is with this type of a scanner, um, you're generally not going to be in the menu messing around too much uh, once you kind of select 
um, your preferred palette option. Um, you can't go into the menu and adjust your contrast and sharpness, screen brightness, all those kinds of things. Um, and then generally, once you have all that set, you're just going to be turning it on, looking through it, turning it back off. And so uh, with the buttons, I don't find it to be a huge deal. However, it's just something to know. The buttons aren't necessarily the easiest thing to use with gloved hands in particular. The Scion lets you preview videos and photos directly off the device using the menu. This is an extremely useful feature, especially for like law enforcement purposes, where let's say you want to look into a, a crawl space, a tunnel, an attic, something like that. All you got to do on the Scion is turn on the video recording, position it where you want to look, and then watch the video directly off the Scion. Okay, the video on the left is recorded on board. Video on the right is through the eyepiece. I just want to show you the differences because sometimes the video resolution is a little bit different when it's recorded on board. Okay, and here's Black Hot, obviously. Now, I did have to speed up the videos just so it didn't take forever uh, with the wife walking back and forth. And so that's why it's going to look a little funny. Okay, here I'm just toggling to the different palettes so you can see what they look like. And this is the picture in picture mode. Um, you can easily go in and out of it just by hitting the center button. All right, here's the digital zoom. Just keep in mind every time you zoom in like that, you're gonna lose some resolution. Okay, this palette is lava. Um, initially, I always thought it was kind of gimmicky, but as you can see, it actually works really well. All right, the Scion is on the left and the Breach is on the right. Now, this comparison I wanted to show because the Scion 166 is a 0 0.7 base magnification and the Breach is a 1.0. So you can see how much more field of view you do get with that 0 0.7. As you can tell from the videos, uh, this thing works really well. Uh, the thing I like about this particular device, uh, this uh, PTM-166, as well as the OTM-266s, is that with these smaller lenses on them, um, you get a much wider field of view. And that's what I'm personally looking for in, in a scanner. You know, I basically want to be able to pick it up, um, have a wide field of view so I'm not scanning as much, and just see if something's there. With this, with this type of device, with this lens on it, it's going to do everything I need to do within the ranges uh, that I need to use it for on my property. Obviously, if you have longer ranges, like if you're out in big open areas and stuff, uh, this smaller lens may not be uh, exactly what you're looking for. You may want something bigger. Uh, luckily, with the Scions, you do have the ability to pick bigger lenses on them. So um, you just got to kind of decide what's going to work best for you. You know, for me in particular, I like having um, a bigger field of view, which is going to mean a smaller lens, uh, just so I can, you know, get better scanning capability. Uh, I also like the fact that I don't have to focus this thing. Basically, all I'm doing is turning it on, picking it up, looking around with it, and putting it back down. You know, I don't, I'm not going to pick it up and accidentally have this thing out of focus, which could happen. You know, whenever you're you're kind of hanging these devices on your neck or you're stuffing them in jackets, things like that. If you have a focusable lens, uh, there's a chance that your focus is going to be off. And so um, there is an advantage to having these fixed focus devices because they're going to be, um, they're going to be, you know, they're, they're set within reason to, to give you a good image overall. And, uh, and that's something that I think a lot of people forget is that the purpose of some of these scanners is to, is to just make a detection and a recognition. Uh, so anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, just hit me up in the comments section and thanks for watching.